You may wonder, who were the first inhabitants of the land that is now Canada? They were the indigenous peoples, the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. These were the people who had settled and established trade in what is now Canada by 1000 BC. Unfortunately, indigenous people, and children specifically, had been treated very harmfully by the government. One of the worst ways was through residential schools. This was an extensive school system formulated by the Canadian government and administered by churches. The main objective was to exploit indigenous children while brainwashing them into European ways of living with a Christian identity. The residential schools were known to run from the 1870s all the way to the 1990s. Children were separated from their families at a very young age, with no choice but to attend such schools. So what led to residential schools? When European settlers moved into Canada, they brought with them their beliefs and assumptions. They felt that their civilization was above all and the peak of human achievement. As a result, the settlers considered the indigenous peoples as ignorant and childlike, all of which was not true. They wanted to civilize them all through one medium, and that was education. John A. Macdonald, who was the Canadian Prime Minister at the time, commissioned Nicholas Flood Davin, a politician and journalist, to prepare a report on creating rigorous schools specifically for indigenous peoples, and in 1879, that report was prepared. It was then in 1880 when the government established some of the first residential schools in Canada. Under the Indian Act in 1920, it became obligatory for all indigenous children to attend residential schools. It was also illegal for them to attend any other institutions. Living conditions in residential schools were absolutely horrific. Their purpose was to abolish the indigenous culture. When indigenous students arrived, their hair was cut short, clothing taken away, and they were given different uniforms. Days were full of harsh activities. Boys and girls were kept completely separate. Even siblings could not interact with one another, which weakened families. Students could not speak their own languages, nor could they practice any of the skills that they had along with their traditions. Most of the time, residential schools taught practical skills and barely any intellectual knowledge. Girls learned how to sew, cook, and clean. Meanwhile, boys learned carpentry, tinsmithing, and farming. The schools were underfunded and this required students to do most of the maintenance and housekeeping. Students spent very little time in class and most of their time maintaining schools. They were behind in their education and many were unable to make it further. All kinds of abuse were common. Children were beaten, shackled to different objects and punished in many different ways. Overcrowding, inadequate nutrition and healthcare and poor sanitization led to a significant number of student deaths. A 24% death rate of residential school students was the number recorded by Peter Henderson Bryce, the government medical inspector in the year of 1907. Church officials and nuns were aware of the harm they caused to the indigenous children, but anyone who spoke up was unable to receive support and was silenced. Eventually, indigenous students and parents protested against these schools. Children sabotaged operations, stole supplies and food, ran away, and set fires in efforts to protest. By 1940, the government and missionaries began realizing how useless the residential schools were, and in 1969, the system was transferred to the Department of Indian Affairs. This ended all church involvement, and soon, in 1986, most residential schools closed. In 1996, the final one, the Gordon Residential School in Panichi, Saskatchewan, met its end. It is estimated that around 150,000 children attended residential schools in Canada. Since then, the Canadian government has established many relief programs for residential school survivors and has apologized for their sufferings, allowing for a slow but steady recovery for Canada's first people. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and share the real story with others. See you in the next one.